Well, welcome to Real Flix Reviews, or like a book club for people late reading. This month's theme is horror, so I picked Resident Evil, made in 2002. We bring you movie news, and this week we have Jonathan Charney, Ryan Preston, Rob Charney, and the man with no tan, Jeff Michael. Anybody have a description of this movie? Apparently we did our homework. Uh, yeah, IMDb's no, description. Be prepared. Yeah. IMDb's yeah. description is horrible, by the way. And they're always horrible. You're right. I mean, we're always we, making a joke that, about that's, that. That's but it's stick. better than nothing. True. Jonathan, uh, you read This it? is a movie based off a video game. <laughs> <laughs> it's worse. <laughs> so, no, oh, it really is. So, here's the magnificent description by IMDb. A special military unit fights a powerful, out-of-control supercomputer and hundreds of scientists who have mutated into flesh-eating creatures after a laboratory accident. Which, A, they weren't really mutated, and it wasn't an accident. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> so you kind of lied! Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'll start this, and i got to say, this movie doesn't... I, I love this movie, but it doesn't hold up as much as I remember it, because it's been probably a few, a few years since I've seen it. Yeah. Um, the electronics, the all the electronics and all the computer scenes and all the stuff is just it, you know bad. that that part it was actually forgivable. The uh, the two things, bad. one of the things bad. was the the CGI bad. did not hold up because I remember at the time thinking, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. And yeah. Like, it it had a couple of moments in there that did I think we all sort of finally remembered like, oh, remember that moment in Resident Evil? It had a couple of those, you know. Yeah. yeah. It was, it's like, your your memory of it is a lot better than it probably really is. Uh, those you, dog... Yeah, you, with these, you sort of tend to remember those couple of good lines and the couple of good moments, you know, right. namely the, 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 the cross-hatched... Uh, laser like, security laser system. Thing. That was, to yeah, me, was cool. the best part, especially right. when the white of the eye dripped. Yeah. The only thing that really bugged me about it this time... Well, actually, every time it's how you drop, and there's no blood on the floor at all, and they say, "Okay, so it cauterize the ruin," but there still be chunks of people, which there weren't. <laughs> right. Chunks of meat, right? Like square chunks of black guy. The one thing though yeah, that yeah, they it, it just turned them into to little little yeah. medium rare what? cubes. The one thing see. that they did do during it was a, that was African American. During the whole laser scene, the one thing that was kind of cool was the laser scene happened. The guy got cubed, and then. <laughs> Oh, when okay. when you later come back to the hallway, the bodies are gone. Yeah. And it's like an homage to the actual video game itself, where right. every time you re-enter a room, right. no more bodies. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, so let me ask this. Um, I know I have the answer for Rob, but uh, uh, <laughs> Jeff and John, have you played the video game? Yes. yes. I mean, the original Resident Evil, not the shit that came after. Yes. I've, I, I never, I never had a chance to play the original one. I've played most of them since that were on the Xbox or the, oh, okay. the one, any of the Xboxes. Because the original one, re I mean, obviously, is what this one was was based off of. Right. But the 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 game itself became such a cult hit because the story was so badass. Right. Um, and this, the movie seemed to sort of touch on a couple of those things, such as you know the 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 little thing about. Um, uh, what do you call it? Um, like you said, the body's being gone after you come back in the room or something like that. That's, uh, and it, you know, little nods here and there, but it just, I think the story in the game was actually better. I, I actually want to give a shout out to Paul W.S. Anderson for not doing the, like the, the video game esque, like POV cam. <laughs> I, I'd like to thank Paul Anderson for never doing anything but Resident Evil movies. <laughs> you know what? I think they, speaking of the game though, they need to, like recreate Resident Evil because it was such a good story during the time. The game was meh, but the story was amazing. And right. you know, I mean, I think they could really create something now with the technology they got now. You know, I and it could be a badass agree. game. What they're probably going to do a, a little bit off topic is they're going to do what they did with the Tomb Raider. They're just going to cut bait, re, uh, refresh. You know, keep enough of the original and the newer games to make the people who liked it enjoy it but introduce new audiences to it well see that was kind of the 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 shitty thing about this one is it 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 immediately turned into like a fast and furious franchise right yes you know yeah. i mean it it started out kind of you know tipping the scales of of uh, of 
what we sort of accept with with you know zombie movies and stuff, but then just went right for the for for jumping the shark. See, yeah, they was, got ridiculous. They really did. That, that was. I mean, the, I know it's that was the it, part they got that ridiculous always... for a zombie movie, but you know they did. It's it's. Well, this, that's the part that always really broke my heart kind of in the movie because the first, you know, this one is, 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 is you know, it's okay. I mean, it's good. And you have horror elements, horror element, elements that were there that could have been more. But on the th- uh, from number three and, and on, there, there's no horror elements. It's an action zombie movie. And it's just, it, it's actually ridiculous. The later on movies, it's, it's, it's stupid. Actually. I got a question. What is with every zombie movie where initially it's like the people don't even know what a freaking zombie is. They're like, it's coming at them, you know, and they're like, they're deciding whether to kill it or not. You know, it's like they've never heard of a zombie before. Apparently it's like some been... new thing. Well, because... Yeah, there's no, there's no science fiction uh, right. Uh, at all. In, right. In the... Every movie, zombie movie, though, repeats that. You I'm know ass- what I mean? I'm assuming that yeah. George R. Romero didn't exist in these universes. And, so... and that's the thing that all these universes sort of have in common is is this has never been a, a, a fantasy of, of, of anybody's mind. Ever. Actually, George Romero was given this film, but he, uh, due to what they called uh, uh, differences... Complex. Uh, yeah. You know, basically, he he did not do the the script. He didn't do the movie. Yeah, of course, he wouldn't. But you know, yeah. but by the way, I want to say, whoever fantasy is zombies have very f- interesting fantasy life. Because you thing- know, like like fantasy in the in the realm of like we've all sat there and daydreamed about some post apocalyptic scenario. <laughs> well, right. mine sure. never involves zombies. So no, um, just, other than for target practice, I right. yeah, I've uh, been in the hospital uh, enough to worry about sick people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I gotta say though the the. I kept trying to think of was there any moment of this this movie that I thought the act the that where was the climax like before the actual end of the movie because I didn't really think this movie had any climaxes I didn't to me it was just kind of like very linear if it was that yeah. supposed sense. to be a continuation though at the same time so maybe they were trying to build up for the next movie but not really yeah I, I know what John means it, it I, like I, I agree with him it seemed to be at the same pace I think it's pacing that we're talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. here okay. and I, I think I think in the first act it's it's almost forgivable the way they're building the tension was was actually kind of good but then when it starts to lead you not down any any really good roads, Right, you know, you're like, okay, why, why all the tension then? You know, for just for this, this, this shenanigans. Yeah, right, the liquor, fast, the too. liquor is where their their climax was supposed to be, and I think they kind of overdid it. Right. It was the just like exactly. the liquor, the thing with the tongue that came out. Oh and, yeah, yeah, um, crawled yeah. along the walls. And I actually thought it happened way they did it too fast. I think they could. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, to be I, honest with you, I I thought they could have introduced it slower. I mean, I'm one of the reasons I originally saw this was because of Mila Djokovic or however you say, and Michelle Rodriguez, but. The scene where they first introduced the zombie when it kind of attacked her, I thought that was way too fast. I thought they could have paced that slower, build up the horror elements more, but it's like, boom, there it is. And like how in the second one where they actually introduced um, her, former her lover. Intro, his former lover or whatever, and he, he turned into that creature. I thought they did a good job in the second one building that. Yeah. But the liquor seemed to be the top of the scale for this movie, and it was just right. kind of... It was almost like they were saving the big characters for for the later movies. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. I actually like the cast in this movie, even though really the two famous people that I know are Mila and Michelle Rodriguez. The 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 African American gentleman who, for some reason, I can never remember his name. I know him. Right. I I know him from other places. Go take a call. But he's the. But oh. he's. But everybody else, you know, don't to me never really stood out. I mean, did anybody else? Anybody Um, else? But to. But to. You know what I mean. <laughs> I think I think the way the movie's laid out, there really wasn't anybody else that was supposed to stand out. Right. Uh, you know, you're looking at the main the main characters. Everybody else is yeah. just a death toll. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of sad because they switched the main character from the game to the movie. Oh, they did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Alice wasn't originally. Uh, there was there was no Alice, and what was yeah. the guy's name? Um. Which the cop? Uh, uh, Chris. Yeah. The. Was it? It was supposed to be Chris, I believe, wasn't it? It might have been, but I thought it was like Leo or Larry or some shit. There was like five different characters or something like that. Well, later on, there's Leon, but he didn't get introduced until the very last. The the movie that came out a couple of years ago is the first time I think he was actually introduced. 
Right, which is which is almost a, a, a tragedy when it comes to, you know, like everybody, that's what everybody wanted to watch the first movie for. The reason Michelle Rodriguez was, was in this movie is because she was such a fan of the video game. Right. You know, yeah, it, yeah, exactly. It's... it's, it's it's a thing about like like you didn't understand the audience that you were that you were showing this movie to. Right. You know, you were almost just like acquiring the property rights of the name of Resident Evil. You know, might have played through the game a little bit, but then just 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 changed all of the fun details that we liked. You know. The and one that, thing uh, that I did really like though is that I learned that um, that I didn't know before uh, was Mila Jonovich did all her own stunts except for I think minus one. The cuts and the bruises that were on her face were weren't makeup; they were real. And uh, that scene where the dogs come and she runs up the wall and kicks the dog, she actually did that. That wasn't CGI. Wow. I'm I like, that's wow. she's hot and she's badass. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> but a bit, you, you can't know, ask she was any also, better than that, right? Uh, but she was also harnessed, though. I'm assuming that of course, it was, but you know, still the fun. No, it didn't badass. say that she was harnessed. It says she <laughs> had to learn. Uh, to run up this wall yeah. and actually do this. I mean, she physically did this. Yeah, yeah so, I was going to say, it wasn't without a lack of training. You know? Right, right. No, right. no, no, I'm just saying, I'd right. be just surprised if it was... You just point run up that wall. Okay, yeah. sure. <laughs> right. I, well, I'm just surprised if it was with if it was without a harness and slash with a harness. Like, without a harness it, to me would be more amazing than with a harness. What I read is, safety. What I read is, no, that there was no harness. Well, Usually well, it's the insurance badass. companies. They, you know, they, if you're a major actor well, and you're going to pull off a stunt... You gotta have the you gotta one be scene honest. that she didn't do, or yeah. the one stunt that she didn't do, was because of her agent talked her out of it. Yeah, said she was gonna get. Uh, he thought that she could have get uh, hanged by the wires uh -huh. that were there. Mm. I, I was going to go back to the comment about Michelle Rodriguez. I actually think it was kind of a shame that she was in here because, to me, I always thought she was the bigger star in this movie. Um, just because really? I've always really? been a bigger, yeah. <laughs> See, like, I did, yeah, I didn't I get that at all. I didn't see that because either. because she to me she was a more interesting character than uh, than Alice. I expected her to die like she did. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Well, there you go. Wow. <laughs> I, well, I mean, to me, everybody except Alice was basically considered a death toll. I mean, basically. Yeah, you've got your continuation characters, but essentially they die and then become something else, a creature so are, or something. Are, are they going to actually, um, I'm hoping when they continue the series, they kill off her and go with the other characters, like, you know, the 9,000 other main characters they have in the, I'm exaggerating a little well, bit. Well, that's not going to happen because she's like, the married star. The she's already like probably signed into all these it, movies. It also helps she's married to the director. <laughs> yeah, that, that does help. What's that? I think they're doing one more. Yeah, the final yeah. chapter in like 2016 is what I heard. I'd be surprised if they didn't reboot the series somehow. No, no it, this no. isn't a rebootable series. No. I mean, this isn't something that's going to, people are going to look well, back on 15 make a TV years series. Well, no, what about, but look at Evil Dead. <laughs> it's not like Breaking <laughs> Bad Dead where they're going to make a Saul movie. Series. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but yeah, but it's a series, but they rebooted Evil Dead with a completely different character. I think you could do it, but you'd have to do it with a different But tone. Evil Dead was kind of an open story to be able to do that, where this is like kind of locked in, kind of like, kind of like The Walking Dead, where... You know, it has its story, it has its space, it has its ending, which it I... Be, it would be exactly the same thing as if you were rebooting Fast and the Furious 10, 20 years from now, or, right. or Harry Potter. You know, not that they haven't done enough of those I Fast think, and the Furious well, movies. Well, what about, uh, you know, I'm like... Saying, but same, they're not going to reboot the franchise. Oh, no, no, right. not reboot, but a different, you know, same universe, different thing. Who knows, I mean, you know... Well, that's Brian, a new Brian, game. Ryan, how many times did we talk about the fact that what's one of the problems with Hollywood? There's no new imagination. Right. It's always oh, yeah. just a remake, a you know, a prequel, a sequel, a whatever. Seriously, call you they can't call just it. let a story be. Yeah. Which, which by the way, stay plagiarism. tuned for movie news. What's yeah, that? It's not like plagiarism is anything new in Hollywood. Yeah. It's just you know, they used to be a little more you know surreptitious about it. <laughs> now it's blatant. Yeah. yeah. And it's like they're almost proud of the fact. Oh yeah, we we added on to this movie. This this this. Remake will be really, really good. You know, it's like it's been made three times already before. What makes you think the fourth time's going to be Not only better, that, but what right? irritates me is when they remake these, it's almost a uh, an insult to the classic that was. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they're like, like with Ghostbusters, I heard they were going to do an all-female cast. Right. Well, they're doing, allegedly, I just, I recently read they're going to do two. Like a male cast and a female cast. It's like, I, I, uh, I really. You I know what? I think let I th it, let let it die. I think we're starting to get fake information, so to speak. I'm be, I'm beginning to believe that 
Because, like you said, now, oh, okay, we're going to do one movie with all girls and one movie with all guys, and I'm going, well, no, wait you a know, minute. I, I mean... Could, it, is, it is Hollywood. They've done I, dumber things. I agree, but Dumb I... Dumb and Dumber 3, oh, or whatever Lord, it is. Can you believe that? Um, so <laughs> since, this is a horror, since this is a horror movie, I've got to ask, what is y'all's favorite death scene? Starting y'all's. with Jeff. Y'all's. Well... I don't have one. It, do. It's probably going to be the cube scene. Um, yeah. I thought that was the most creative death in the whole uh, film. Well, s- since he took mine, I'm going to say the elevator scene. They open the. Oh, elevator. that was good with her head. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like that one. That and made what me was clap. good about that one is that they did it to her twice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate. Whoa! Faked her out. Oh, I'm safe. <laughs> uh, I'm not. So, yeah. so what about you, Ryan? Um, it, it's a it's a layup for the uh, for the for the cube scene. Yeah. You know, um, it, it was actually it's done in another movie, ironically enough, called Cube. Oh, oh great yeah. movie, by the way. I actually totally really like that. It is a trip. That's that's totally worth an hour and a half. But um, for its time, it was really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, but that but that scene just it it almost got kung fu the way you see mm-hmm. the the line of blood start streaking across. You know, right? Yeah, it, it was something out of you know uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, the flying guillotine yeah. or something. Oh, that was great, too. Yeah, not to yeah. get off topic, but the topic. the whole Cube movie, the, the Hollywood ruined it again with, like, two or three other Hyper ones. Cube. Yeah, sure Hyper Cube? Yeah, Hyper and Ninja Cube and Karate yeah. Cube. <laughs> yeah, Ninja. Karate Cube Turn starts... Cube. Well, Karate Cube stars, uh, stars Ralph Macchio. You gotta watch it. Did you say Karate Cube? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was making it up. <laughs> Don't go look for it. It's wax on, wax hey, off. We're just Hold thinking, hey, you know, we can make a bar on time. Hell, actually, if you find it, send it in. I'll watch it. <laughs> so, so since I picked this movie, uh, I'll actually give the rating first. I give it a three out of five. Um, if you asked me, you know, ten years ago, I would have said higher. To me, it doesn't age as well. And when this movie's really relying on the effects, especially the monsters... It, to me, unfortunately, I have to bring it down. So to me, it's a solid three to five. It's definitely, if it's on, I'll watch it every time. But, you know, Jeff? I, one more thing to add, actually, really quick, is I really like the soundtrack to this movie. Oh, yeah, Killer Soundtrack. Um, I thought the music went really well with the film, kind of. Totally. Um, and, it, you know, it was... Uh, it, it definitely was, added a, yeah. a dimension to the film. It was, no it was Marilyn it, yeah. Manson, actually, that did the, yeah. the whole thing. But, I mean, I think he really has a knack for, you know... Sense of uh, yeah, you know. But he does a lot. Of sa- he actually does a lot of soundtracks. No, he does. Consults on a lot of. Yeah. Them. So Ryan, um, it was originally going to be like a like a like a one and a half or two, but then I, I'm sitting there thinking like I, I'm I'm pretty sure this movie was made for for a goof and an yeah. excuse to cube somebody. Right. <laughs> So, and, and then really it, it got brought up because, like you said, the soundtrack kicked ass. It, it did have a couple of good moments. Um, it, it's a three. It's a, it's a decent enough entertaining movie that you'll kind of want to, you know, you'll catch it on, on cable here and there. I'll give, it, I'll, give it a f- I'll give it a four just because I've, I saw it so many times and I actually really liked it uh, back, you know. And it, it held up a little bit better than I expected to, and I really liked The Red Queen. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, with the soundtrack, the Red Queen, the Cube, um, and, of course, I'm a zombie fan, so dead people, always good. Um, I'll give it a four. Um, uh, Rob? So, um, I'll play the Rus- Russian judge this this one. <laughs> Two one. Five. I've been waiting to use the, the point five. Point five. so <laughs> we're going we're to go 2.5 on this one there you go. for me. And, um, I don't know, it... <clears throat> I, I, I write, sometimes a lot of times it has to do with your attention span, right? I found myself drifting off in a lot of parts of this particular movie. It would go on, and it seemed like, okay, let's get to it. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and that, and that, mean, that, that's yeah, that, that says a lot right there. Yeah. And horror movies are generally pretty cheesy, and I thought this one wasn't so cheesy. Well, but, uh, and I, I, I have no cheesy factor in that right. one, but I understand where you're coming from the, on that, though. Yeah. I think Ryan, in the beginning, when he said was completely right, this is definitely for people who love the video game, and mm-hmm. I think this is definitely for our generation, really more than, than anybody else, just because it's yeah, video yeah. games, All especially right. this type of really. <laughs> what are you right. trying the to say here? The guy played Russian Judge. <laughs> no, 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 I, I, no, I, I, I've I, never I, played I, the game, so I can't no, add no, to no. that. You, you're you're pretty much what I was talking about when I was saying, you know, like, it, for the people who play the game, there's going to be a couple of things to sort of kind of get you from scene to scene. But right. without that, 
without that sort of previous knowledge, you, you can't really qualify it as a, as a good movie, you know? Thank so, you. you know, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm no, I agree. Cool. I actually yeah. had two and a half written down before uh, Jeff reminded me of the music. See, I, yeah. that, see, that's what I was trying to say, but I said poorly. And so we're going to switch to House of Cards. And since uh, House of Cards. James mm. took the, the day off on vacation, um, I guess I'll go. Uh, I liked this. I really liked this episode. You got to see how well he, uh, the, the, the main character, Kevin Spacey, plays people in his hometown. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a scene where uh, he's consoling a, a husband and wife who lost their daughter. Mm-hmm. And Due to a water tower. Yeah, a water <laughs> yeah. tower in texting. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, the water tower is a giant peach, and everybody's saying it looks like something completely different. It looks like, it does. It looks like an ass. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and since we're, we're semi a family friendly show, I'm not going to really say exactly. What? You can't say ass? Well, is there well, an actual. I wonder if there was an intentional meaning behind that. You know? I, <laughs> Someone's I, ass I, ate something. I, I think it was. Um, <laughs> and there's a scene when he did the, the Zach Morris thing, and he was talking about how. Um, humility was their greatest strength and weakness, and you get to see, you know, I, I love right. the fact he's really good at playing people. Oh, yeah. And it's like right. puppets that's his whole to the thing. He, he's and, the puppet yeah, master. That seems to be starting to be the, the running theme of, of, I think even all the little plot points sort of up until now have been sort of just it, it tips to how he's he's kind of kind of approaches his problems and things like that, but um, my favorite part of this was the eulogy. Yeah. Oh, the one that's um, seen in the church. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah we, we just totally. the, the, the whole fourth wall breakdown, or as we co- love to call it here, the Zach Morris uh, uh, move or huh. gimmick, um, was actually really well used uh, for for probably the, the first time. Like, it, there's a couple of times before this where it was a little bit like, okay, I still don't know exactly how to feel about it. But, but yeah, the, the, the eulogy when he's letting the audience know that, you know, his old man was a piece of shit and, Et cetera, et cetera. He's kind of like the house of politics. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the part that I really liked on that one was I'd like to read to from no. It's just that yeah, whole yeah. move is yeah. like that yeah. was like amazing. That, like he didn't have that plan. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's that's what I like that. It's like well, that is and amazing. And that's the thing about the character. He he plots everything. Yeah. Every move is plotted out. Yeah, everything is yeah. for a reason oh, yeah. and yeah. precise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and and I really thought they did well again with, you know, him looking at the camera and explaining <clears throat> a little bit about what he's gonna do next. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean I you know, I I just so far I'm really enjoying the series. And it is a good series. Yeah. It really is. And I, I want to smart. That's what makes Spacey it. It's just amazing. And I, I want to talk about his his news girl, and how uh, her getting this amazing scoop is starting to piss off her bosses, and you get to see her learning tricks from him. Yeah. Right. Like uh, when she said to so you, uh, her, her boss uh, her boss belittled her, and was saying you can't do certain things, and and he said, was well, this because I'm a woman? And he basically said, you know, something like, you know, well, you're never going to do this ever again type. And it was, I, I can't wait to see them two characters become on parody of, of, of being able to really tweak people. The, um, yeah. You think it's going to run into an issue between the two of their relationship? Um, I'm the hoping Queen not, Frank, but probably, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the yeah. girl that plays Zoe, it's, uh, her name is Kate Mara. I believe she's also in Helix. Wouldn't be oh, surprised. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've, I've been trying to pinpoint it down all day today. She looks I familiar. It just, I, it just came to me. I think she's in Helix, so I'm going to look it up. I keep, keep my, so, with that being said, it's a you know, teaser. Make sure you watch uh, Chapter 4. Is that what it's called? Or Book 4 or whatever it is? Yeah, uh, Chapter 4. And so make make sure you watch that for next week. And going to remind you, we do have a Facebook page. You love us, hate us. Hey, if you, you you say something horrible or positive, we might read it on air. Possibly, maybe. And also, how about pause for the cause and donate to Old Guy Tech TV? Help keep the lights on for a little bit longer. <laughs> and going to and now it's for movie news. And here is one that I'm actually heartbroken on. <sighs> There's going to be a remake of Magnificent Seven. Jesus, man, I'm sitting here, like, preparing myself. Like, yeah, well, right. Yeah, yeah, and then he goes... I totally just seven. flopped that yeah, one. That was like, like an oh, epic fail. Oh, yeah, man. but <laughs> really, I mean, the Magnificent Seven is a great movie, but it's ripping off a famous Japanese movie, and every movie almost rips that movie off. Doesn't every American movie do that? 
a lot. <laughs> but here's... <laughs> They're the, all remakes, remember? <laughs> but here's the one this should be in. According to this, it includes Denzel, Denzel Washington, Ethan Hawke, Chris Pat, Pratt, Haley Bennett, and Vincent D. De... D'Onofrio. Yeah. I, I could do without the first actor there. And Denzel. I... <laughs> I genuinely yeah, would agree. It's be interesting to see his his place. Is he, he going to be the uh, the Yafet Koto role? I that's a good question. I really don't know. Wait, was that that wasn't Yafet Koto? That was um. Oh, was, the guy from Ten Commandments. Is that who you're thinking of? Um, Yul, Yul Brenner. Brenner. Yeah. And I'll be honest, Yul Brenner Brenner is the sole reason I love this movie. <laughs> yeah. He's... Yeah. He, he was he was awesome in that. Movie. You know, I've only, I, I have a problem. I've only seen half of this movie, unfortunately, the original one. When, when they take an epic that's as old as this movie is, you know, and, and, and I think they sit, sit back and they say, okay, well, this movie is now going on 40 years old. We can make, we can make a, a, another version of it and um, uh, bring it more up to date, but you're still going to be doing a Western, so the time frame doesn't really right. change. And so we're adding what new new actors to it, so it might draw people. I don't know. I have a hard time with it. It's a it, you know it it is an icon of a movie, and uh, I, I I too have problems with being. being I think the best movie. western of our time is a TV show called Deadwood. Well, that yeah 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 we we we've hit uh, westerns all the time. We've got some really you know uh, good That's westerns. A sore subject around here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am kind of curious. Do you think it's going to be a remake like the new True Grit, which was almost a one for one reproduction, or do you think they're going to make their totally own twist? Cool with that. I would be I would totally be. cool with mm -hmm. that because I loved the new True Grit precisely because it was the old True Grit. Right, and they they just changed a grittier. Yeah, and they, they yeah. changed it enough just a that grittier. it wasn't uh, <laughs> a straight copy. They, just, they added Coen Brothers to it, which just makes everything awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I'll agree with you on that. And the, the director who's doing it, and I can't pronounce his name, is Anton F-U-Q-U-A. Wow. But he's done The Equalizer, Exit Strategy, Olympus Has Fallen, Brooklyn's Finest, uh, Shooter, I Call, yeah, and King Arthur. Clark. Equalizer he, was interesting. He's he's done some okay movies. I think you know. Uh, I don't know. Wouldn't call any of it hit. He did the Training yeah. Day too, which Ah Shooter was a pretty decent, decently good movie though. Yeah, yeah. no, I liked it, but no, I don't know yeah. if I would call it. Yeah, I think it's his best movie personally. I don't know. I mean, he he's got a really a really good style and a good eye for for kind of what people want to see at any given point. So, you know, he he knows how to how to how to focus on the good shit. Yeah. I mean, with a movie like Magnificent Seven, I mean, it's it's the whole collection of all the people and then and then them acting as a group i mean is 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 the whole the whole awesomeness of that movie do so i think th i think he's got a good a good shot of doing this one do you think he's going to be able to keep the the epic feel like the original has oh yeah i i i because i think that's that's pretty much why they that's got to be why they hired him because that's yeah. the sole reason why i'm a little nervous there's no reason why they can't do a good western and we've seen kevin right. cosner do a few good ones mm -hmm. and and they, you know, they have the ability to do it. But it's an oh, epic. Will they do it? Open but Range was the Mac. I love that movie. But it, oh, but, yeah. But I would say... It, it can't beat that one. I would say it has two things kind of against it in the modern cinema. Is it's an, it's, a, it's an epic and it's a Western. And I think the two mixing may have issues. Because the last epic I'd say is The Hobbit. And, well, it's, ish, it, you know, it's okay at best. I enjoy The Hobbit. Well, you know, but I mean, you know what I mean, far as the actual epic feel of it. It doesn't feel. Well, epic. how well, epic can you get without it becoming over corny and like overdone? Well, I, yeah, and again, maybe the term epic is used too much. Right. That's ex yeah, exactly what I'm thinking is because people try and like every movie that comes out is like the best movie on the planet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. It's just like, can it's it be a epic. good movie? But or I'm obsessed with this movie. But right? Magnificent you know? Seven <laughs> has that epic, you know, like Ten Commandments epic feel, you know, that type of, you know. Well, it, it had a lot, it had a lot more going for, I mean, the soundtrack that everybody remembers, the, the, the cast was, was, I mean, was, was a, was a, a, a rogues gallery of awesome people. Yeah. And that's it. A, music plays a big role in a lot of movies. I mean, so, you could take a, 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 a epic situation <laughs> and ruin it by bad music oh absolutely it's one of the sole reasons i'm really interested in quentin tarantino's the hateful eight because oh, he's the one hell. person you could never predict the soundtracks to that's not true you could count that on is a good one. so not true well the problem is he picks that a, is so not but true. do you think you can predict because because he 
he picks obscure bands that you've never heard of just because you know really have you seen reservoir dogs have you seen seriously all, i mean all come on stuff's like iconic right exactly around that area but um but but he did other interesting stuff with stuff like um uh, uh inglorious bastards and with killed the, them. right with certain classical pieces and things like that, obviously trying to take it back a little bit to the 1940s, it's it's weird when you have soul. Obviously, he still dipped into the into his uh, vinyl kind well, of. Well, then there was Jackie Brown that kind of uh, <sighs> accentuated that fact with that kind yeah, of music. Jackie Brown went almost overboard with all the music. Right, I hate that movie. Um, <laughs> so the next word we're going to talk about Tell is us how you really feel. <laughs> it's a god awful movie and it sucks. Um, the next one, I don't know how I feel about this. It's Hugh Jackman hints that Wolverine 3 will be his last mutant movie. I think it's good and bad. I like him as Wolverine, but you know, at this point, I actually think it's time for some new blood. What do you guys yeah, think? he needs to move on because he's been typecasted. I, I, I kind of agree. Yeah, he, he has become Wolverine, and I think he's, he's embraced it above and beyond the, the call of an actor's duty you right. know, to embrace a role like that. You know, I, we, we should we should we should let him go gracefully. So he he's <laughs> milked the character for as much money as he can possibly get out of it. Well, you he, know, he can, but at the same time, uh, he's he's lived that character. Oh yeah, longer than most actors would have and, based based on the fact that you're going to be typecast. I mean, almost sure an argument for it though is that the X Men is kind of an ongoing comic. I mean, so there is a lot of storyline to cover if they really want to. Except that they're killing off Wolverine. Well, but I think we're yeah. talking about we're talking about yeah. Hugh Jackman himself yeah. and, and don't forget he's getting older as we well, get that's older. What I, was say, right. I really wanted to see it end with like an old man Logan. Yeah. 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 Oh, exactly. That would be Oh, if it was exactly like the comic book? Exactly like the comic. Oh, that would be amazing. Well, wait a minute. My question is, how could it be old man, considering he's been alive for how is. long? Like well, decades. Well, the thing is, the, the comic uh, takes place like another couple hundred years in the future, or I think like fi another 50 years in the future, and yeah. after a certain point in his aging process, he actually starts to age a little a little bit. Oh, yeah, okay. And it's it's like post-apocalyptic, like Bruce Banner's children kind of rule the world His grandchildren. It's, well, it's that an amazing totally comic different. book. Like, he, he's even he's a pacifist too i gotta say they've made a lot of x-men movies but i they are thoroughly entertaining i mean the one thing exactly. i think they have kept is they are entertaining but i i do agree that there's probably going to need to be an end to it i would yeah. say they're all entertaining except x-men 3 that movie sucked well I'm, I'm i'm sure glad you're happy with your sucked right opinions <laughs> today um, everything <laughs> sucks today guys in all these movies if, if, suck. if you actually look at that one number three is the one that most people complain about so at what point do you take a movie just for entertainment value it's entertaining it's still a bad movie there you go but still the problem the, the, i was gonna say look at half of the 1950s sci-fis that are bad movies but they're uh, thoroughly entertaining but they were be made to be b movies no they yeah. were yeah. no i mean but, that was it yeah yeah i mean and so we didn't have any better than that. We didn't have the technology to be <laughs> so these movies, and everybody so knew we're, it. We're kind of carrying on long. We're coming towards the end of our show. Okay, goodbye. So <laughs> next right. week is next, <laughs> and we're done. Next week is James' pick. So he's doing Cabin in the Woods. Oh uh, God! Hell yeah. Yes. So you know, make sure you stay for that. That's a gore fest. That's what I would have ended up picking. <laughs> Aw, how cute. Uh, next week's movie, uh, excuse me, I gave the movie Resident Evil a 3 out of 5, Jeff gave it a 4, Ryan gave it a 3, Rob gave it a 2.5 out of 5. Next week's movie <laughs> is Cabin of the Woods and House of Cards 4. four. And as always, see you next week. Bye. <laughs>